By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are looking at a round two match of the Knights of Thorn tournament that was held in Daventer. And of course I was there to stream some games and I'll make nice movies out of them. And today we're looking at a match between Green Stompy that is playing against an Arabian aggro deck. And um, just to talk a little bit about the first deck, Green Stompy is getting more and more popular. We see it more. Doesn't surprise me because it's very accessible. And um, looking at the other deck, Arabian Aggro, uh, in this case it's a blue-green Arabian Aggro, I'm really excited uh, to see this because of the Surrender Djinn. I think it's a beautiful card. It doesn't see that much play, so I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how this is going to work out. Now before we're going to look at the actual game, I'm going to do a short deck tech by discussing some key cards in both of these decks. Now if you would like to go straight to the game itself, you can check the description below and there you will find a timestamp and it will take you straight to game number one. Um, now I'm going to continue here with the deck deck. The first deck that I would like to take a look at is the mono green deck and it's being played by the player on the left. Now mono green is, is, pretty, is a pretty solid. When you're playing mo mono you know it's going to be very consistent which I think is one of the strengths of this deck. You know what it's going to do and it's probably going to perform nine out of ten times and as we can see here uh, on the left side we see a giant grove and a berserk um, and in the middle we see a lot of one drops lanowar elf script sprite scavenger folk and on the right side we see silver library and ice storm now let's just discuss the creatures quickly here in the middle i believe that this mono green deck is not playing suchis it's not playing urnum jins instead of that it's really going on that cheap creature train so it just wants to put out a lot of one drops attack very aggressively from the start and use giant groves and berserks to kind of deal extra damage so really pushing your opponent in a corner this is really a very fast and aggressive deck on the other side we have some cards that are a little bit more controlling and i think ice storm is an example of that if um, the green stompy player can manage to play out a lanowar elf or an elves of the deep shadow because i believe he's also playing with elves of the deep shadow um, then he can play an Ice Storm at turn 2 and in that way kind of slow down his opponent while he is actually accelerating himself. So he's putting more and more creatures on the board and slowing down his opponent so he cannot play out his creatures to kind of put blocks there on the road. So I think Ice Storm can be very important in this matchup. Another reason why Ice Storm I believe is getting uh, chosen over, uh, for instance, a Winter Orb, is that Ice Storm can just take away the blocking ability of uh, a Mishra's Factory. Ice Storm can take away a Maze of If, which is no longer restricted. So, really, land removal in in the current meta of Swedish old school, I, I, I believe it's really important, and that's why we see more and more players picking, choosing Ice Storm over a Winter Orb. I'm actually curious what you think about this. Do you think that when you're playing Mono Green, Ice Storm should be your first pick, or do you think Winter Orb should be your first pick? Curious uh, to hear from you, because it used to be Winter Orb for a long time, and now I feel that Ice Storm is really taking over. Uh, so the other card that's above Ice Storm here is Sylvan Library. I think it's another key card. Um, it's just an enchantment that can fill your hand. It's card draw uh, ability for green, which is fantastic. As a green player, you don't really care so much about your life when you're playing an aggressive deck like this. You just want to pay your life. You know you you don't want the game to go to mid-game, late-game. You want your opponent to be dead by then. If you're in mid-game, late-game, it probably means you're losing. So for the green player, it's just about drawing a lot of cards from the Sylvan to keep the pressure going. So I think Sylvan Library here is a very good choice to put in in these green decks and, and could be decisive here. Now let's look at the other deck. The deck on the right is Blue-Green Arabian Aggro and here we see the key cards of that deck. Now also this deck plays with Berserk, it's very important and especially in combination with that Surrender Jin. So Surrender Jin is a 5-6 flyer for 2 blue and 2 and during your upkeep, you must choose one of your own lands and destroy it. And if you destroy an island, then it actually deals three damage to you. So Surrender Jin is definitely a card that you know you don't want it to stick um, to stick in there too long. Um, so having a berserk is actually a great way of and dealing ten damage to your opponent and kind of saying bye bye to to your Surrender. Uh, also, we see the other two big and big creatures for for a little cost. 
the Urnum Gin, the 4544, and of course the Surrender Free, the 3 casting cost 3 4 flyer that deals 1 damage during your upkeep. Now, interesting here to see is in this particular game is is this player not um kind of killing himself here because Sur uh, surrender perfreed and surrender Jin kind of can deal damage to you and when you're playing against such an aggressive deck as as the green aggro green stompy um you know this might not be the way you want to go maybe there will be situations in the game where you want to play a surrender perfreed but you're so low on life total that you're not able to do that anymore so that's going to be very interesting to look at i'm really happy to see this kind of decks coming back because i felt at least in the netherlands that um, you're seeing less Arabian Nights because of the City in the Bottles that are being mainboarded and I have to admit I am one of the guilty parties. I played two City in the Bottles mainboard in some of my builds including at this tournament so uh, for me this decks, these decks can be great to play against if you know if I can find my, my City in the Bottles. Um, but I think this is going to be a very interesting matchup where probably the green player wants to try to go really really fast but when you look at the blue green arabian aggro player it's not a slow deck i mean his creatures are three and four so that's not a lot so if he can get a mox or another way to accelerate his mana i believe he also plays with lana elves i mean he can also get his creatures out quickly and then i think the arabian aggro deck has advantage because the creatures are bigger uh, you know a lot of of his creatures are flying so i mean that can be a huge uh, threat for the green player so it's going to be interesting if the, to see if the green player is going to be fast enough to win this. Um, so all in all, I believe this is going to be an exciting uh, matchup. So let's just go to the games. Game number one is about to start. And on the left, we have the mono green player. On the right, we've got that um, blue green rabid aggro. And there is a Pendle Haven with a very glaring Lanaware Elves there in the middle of the table and a basic land from the player on the right. Second there. Oh, and this is what you want to do. Playing that Sylvan and dealing damage with the Lanaware. And there's a Pendle Haven and a pass turn there from the Arabian Aggro player. Now he's able to look at the three cards. This is going to be interesting. And look at that. He chooses to pick both of them, meaning he's going to 12. And I believe this is exactly what you want to do when you're the green player. Just put the pressure on. Just fill your hand with that Sylvan. And there's an Ice Storm taking care of the island and playing an Asp. And that island could also be important, of course, later if when he decides to play his Berserks, for instance. Because if your opponent doesn't have a double blue... And look at that, another extra card. I do believe he should go to 8 here instead of 9, but maybe I'm missing something. Uh, what I wanted to say is with 2 blue, there's always the danger of a counterspell. And here he's attacking, and you see the Arabian player paying immediately for the poison counter by the Aspen. You can do that, actually. You don't have to wait until your upkeep. And there's a Giant Grove. No counter spell here. And another one. And he's now indicating that he also pumped it. And a Berserk. Whoa! Is it over? Is that game? So Pendlehaven makes it 2-3. Then double Giant Grove. And let's... Okay, he's actually on two life. He's still alive. So it's not game yet. That went pretty fast there. Um, the Asp most made 2-3 and then plus 6, plus 6. Meaning it was turned into an 8-8. Eight, eight. And then with a Berserk over it, he could deal 16 damage there with one Asp. That's just crazy. And we saw an Ice Storm there from the Arabian Aggro player taking care of that Pendlehaven, which means that he probably has one more turn. And he's taking another extra card. That means he's down to four life now. Playing the Pendlehaven, pumping it up. And that's game. Okay. <laughs> that's it. And this is exactly what I talked about in the deck deck. That, you know, if the green Stompy player can go so fast. And also using the land removal the way he did right now. Um, that, you know, the, the green uh, blue player cannot even reach three mana. I believe three mana is kind of the amount that the Arabian aggro deck kind of needs. Playing Surrender Befreets, playing some Ice Storms, you know, I mean, that's the mana count that he has to get to. So um, this is game number one. Let's let these players sideboard and then uh, we'll see them back in game number two. Game number two, and we have the Arabian aggro player on the play here. And look at this, the green player is taking a mulligan. 
So we're playing according to London Mulligan rules here, meaning he can just draw seven, and if he wants to keep, he needs to put one on the bottom of his library. I do see a lot of our elves there in his opening hand, which is always good. And he's keeping it, so he has a six hand to start with, six card hand to start with, and there's a pretty good opening here, Pendlehaven into a Lanor Elf. I think we're going to see a completely different game here because the uh, Arabian player already has the mana dork, meaning that he now will have three mana and he's also on the play. So I think we get to see those big Arabian Knights creatures in this matchup. Oh, this is unexpected here, at least for me. There's not a blue mana. I was kind of thinking of a Surrender Pafrit here, turn two. It's not coming. He is dealing two damage, though. And the green player is here playing out Script Sprites and a Lana Elves, and also played out a Mishra's Factory. So they both have a Mishra's Factory. Attacking now, being able to pump it up with the Pendlehaven, dealing four damage, meaning that the green player is going to 14 here, but still not a big creature from the Arabian Aggro player. And I kind of expected that. So let's see what the green player can do now. And there's an Ice Storm on the Mishra's Factory. And that means you're taking care of a land and a creature at the same time. Not attacking with the Script Sprites. Interesting. Paying for four here. Look at that, the Surrender Jinn. So this is the 5-6 Flying Creature, and I really enjoy seeing these cards. They're not played enough. They're so beautiful. And I think City in a Bottle is the reason that they're not seeing that, that much play. But I mean, a 5-6 for 4 mana. I know you got to sacrifice a land in your upkeep, but it's just such a strong card. And of course, the idea of the Arabian Aggro player is to find a Berserk and Berserk it. Passing turn now. Ooh, as to put a land away, dealing three damage to himself, playing a soul ring, attacking here for five, and there's a chum block with the script sprites. Passing turn. And this is this is a very interesting game. Much more dynamics going on here um, than that we saw in game number one where it was just kind of a walkover by the green player which is going too quickly and now we see a completely different game and there's an attack with the five six another chum block here by the script sprites that's another nice thing about berserk by the way it gives it trample and now it's going to be interesting what he's going to sacrifice sacrificing an island dealing three damage to himself having another basic island in hand attacking again He's probably playing with Tolaria as well. Interesting. Ooh, dealing 10 damage, and that's it. That's game. Wow. That went kind of fast. I mean, let's 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 have a look. Let's put that in slow-mo and, and see how that went. So the green player is on 14, playing a Berserk to kind of kill, so using it as removal, basically. And there's another Berserk, so that means the first Berserk makes him like... 10 power and the second one makes him 20 power so he goes to four from 14 to minus six so wow okay that that was actually what was happening it just went it just went by so fast you have to understand that kind of to make this games like more watchable i do speed them up twice to speed so sometimes plays can go pretty quickly uh whoa okay so there's the victory for the Arabian aggro uh, player, it's going to be 1-1. One, one. It is 1-1. One, one. And what's interesting to see now is in the third game, when the green player gets to start again, can he have that tempo win uh, that he had in game um, number one? So let's just quickly go to game number three. Game number three, the decisive game here to see who's going to win this match. And I think green has a slight advantage here um, because it can start and... and it's so important, like, who gets to start with these aggressive decks. I mean, it gives you such an advantage. We do see another mulligan by the green player. And th that can make a difference as well. I mean, if, if he can find a Sylvan, he can, again, you know, just draw extra cards. But he has to find it, though. And what if this, this hand is nothing as well? He, he is keeping it. And look at that. An Elves of the Deep Shadow. A lot of glare there, but I could see that. And a Lanawar Elf and a Mox here. So the Arabian Aggro player is putting out some extra mana, some mana ramp. And that could make a big difference here. Now having three mana, maybe now even mana number four. Being able to play Surrender Jin, Surrender Befreet, earn him. Oh, he's actually playing a Strip Mine. Oh, and look at that. This came from the sideboard, Whirling Dervish. 
the one one creature that has protection from black and when it deals a damage it gets a plus one plus one counter there is a mistress factory and a lana ralph so having that elves of deep shadow to pump the mistress factory is a possible blocker but you also have the pendlehaven of course oh that pendlehaven is going to be crucial here because he can pump his whirling dervish choosing not to attack interesting interesting choice and there is a script sprites the one one flyer but i think if i would be the green player right now i wouldn't feel very comfortable and the arabian player finally a double blue and there it is the surrender gin five six ladies and gentlemen for four mana i rest my case bam that's a good card and beautiful art by the way it should see more play let me know if you agree with me. Now he has to sack something. It's not going to be easy. Or take three damage. He's actually sacking his Mishra's factory. And he's attacking here. There's a block. Chump block. And he's thinking. Paying three more. Oh, and look at that. A surrender per freet. Now all these cards are hurting himself as well. Because now he's taking three damage and he's taking a damage from the Surrender of Reed. So that is, you know, that's not ideal when you're already playing against an aggro deck. On the other hand, I mean, it looks like he has things under control, even with just two mana. And there is a, oh, look at that, a pump by the Pendlehaven, making two, three, putting a giant growth on there. And there's a Berserk over the Surrender Jin. Probably doesn't want to sacrifice more land. And I do find it interesting that the Script Sprites actually died with that block because I thought it was turned into a 2 3 and then a plus 3 plus 3. Yeah, exactly. It's still alive. That's nice sportsmanship here. Pointing out to your opponent, you know, that's old school. Just pointing out, listen, he's actually not dead. And, you know, bring your creature back on a battlefield. That's kind of the way the game should be, you know. Helping each other out. You, you want to win the right way. You don't want to win um, because of those little, little things, you know, that happen. That can happen. And uh, let's see. And all of a sudden, life is looking a little bit brighter for the green player. Although we do see that Surrendip of Freed being played again. And the green player seems to be in the tank. Looks like they're discussing possible outcomes. I do see a Ice Storm there. Maybe that's something to play on the Pendlehaven. He's attacking. Making 2-3. Will there be another... Interesting to see what's going to happen now. There's a hurricane. Okay. <laughs> I'm kind of liking this. Very creative ways. I like hurricane in this build as well, by the way, because it's a nice, it's direct damage, you know. And because you're aggressive, you're probably going to deal more damage to your opponent early on. Ooh, and there's, I believe, a bit of a missed chump block there. Forgetting about that Pendlehaven. Maybe it would have been better to just block the Whirling Dervish because now it's got a counter on it, making it 2-2. Two -two. And let's see. I see Scavenger Folk there. He can, of course, keep his Mishra's Factory untapped to block the Whirling Dervish. I think that's something you definitely want to do. And there's a Scavenger Folk. A lot of glare on that card, but it's a Scavenger Folk. And Scavenger Folk is useful to deal with those Mishra's Factories. There's another Whirling Dervish. Interesting. So he boarded in some cheaper creatures. Which makes sense if you think back of that first game. Of course, the difficulty with Whirling Dervish is that they are too green. And when you're playing multiple colors, you usually want to avoid double cost. And tapping three here, will there be an Ice Storm? There is an Ice Storm, and this is risky. Because when he now attacks with his Whirling Dervishes... 
he will have to make a choice. But he did take care of the Pendlehaven, though. And then they're talking a little bit about that library, but that library is not really going to do anything. I believe he has two cards in hand. And there he goes, attacking with everything. That makes sense. That is, that is as to be expected. I think I, I, I will definitely block the 2-2 two -two Dervish, because if it becomes 3, it can trade with your Mishra's Factory. But it's not easy. He's also on just on 7. He doesn't have a really, really large life total. I think what I would do is block with the Lunawer, tap the Lunawer to activate the Scavenger Folk. Interesting. Yeah, that's exactly what I would have done. But the only difference I would have made is block the Dervish. Although maybe this is better because you're now you're trading creatures. And of course, it's a 3-3, but you can trade again against um, against your factory. The green deck doesn't need a lot of mana anyway. And it also takes care of that other dervish. So... There's a beautiful Toleria, by the way, by the blue player. Beautiful card. And there's the trade. This is an exciting match. And the uh, Arabian aggro player is ooh, playing Recall. Ooh, <laughs> taking back that Surrender of Jinn. 5-6 powerhouse, and he's just on 4 life. That could be the decider here. Oh my. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. And now you just want to have a swords, but you're playing mono green. Mm, not ideal. Finding a basic forest. No. No. And the Arabian aggro player is on 13. Not second to, to Teleria. I like that. And attacking. And th this must be it. He needs a miracle. And there's a... <laughs> there's a Berserk. That's it. That's game. Oh, man. That was close. This was a very entertaining third game. Thank you, uh, gentlemen, for sharing this. Really nice to see. And, and I must say, I really like the, um, the way the green player kept, you know, coming up with new ways to take, to take care of those very beefy... Uh, uh, blue flyers. I think Surrender Jin is really the uh, the uh, the man of this game number f uh, three, the VIP here. Um, okay, interesting here. So this was um, this was round number two of the Knights of Thorn here in Daventer. If you want to see more of uh, of the games of this tournament, keep an eye on the channel. I will be posting more matches. For now, thank you for watching. If you want to support Timmy Talks, you can do so by liking this video, leaving a comment, sharing, subscribing if you're not a, a member yet. That really helps. I wanted to say thank you for watching, but it turns out that uh, these players are playing some more games. So I'm just going to put some music under here and you can enjoy some more magic. Uh, have fun, enjoy the ride, and uh, I'll see you next time on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic.
to Sumba Kazi.